best mix of hits anywhere on the planet. This is Vectis Radio. So you're listening to Vectis Radio. It's a Tuesday and I'm uh, privileged to be able to introduce uh, David Icke to Vectis Radio once again. Morning, David. How are Hello, you? Hello, Ian. It's lovely out there, isn't it? It's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's especially uh, lovely on a day like this um, in Ride High Street where people are falling on their backsides today, as they always do when it's wet out there. And um, we've got a, an Isle of Wight council uh, that wants, wants to f fleece everybody through every source possible, and they can't even replace lethal, bloody, slippery uh, um, pavestones with ones that, that people won't slip on, you know. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. It goes on year after year after year. Do you know what, maybe because maybe they will be listening, because last year, when you were on last year, they were listening down there, because when we had a meeting with them, they uh, commented on, on you being in. So they, they are listening, so maybe that's a message, and maybe they will do something oh, about it. They're too busy being corrupt, mate. <laughs> and, 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 and incompetent. I mean, you know, this, 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 the, 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 the people that run this island and, and effectively control the council, not even on the council, yeah, it's the Isle of Wight bloody mafia that, that, that run the drugs and do the dodgy property deals to uh, launder drug money, who make sure uh, uh, decisions are made on the council to suit them in terms of what they want. And, um, and all that's going on. And people are creaming off unbelievable amounts of money from these deals, including deals through the council, which are supposed to serve the people. And they can't even repa re replace uh, paving stones on a very short section of ride pavement. And how on earth um, uh, little uh, old ladies and frail people uh, actually stay on their feet? It, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so bad. And nothing's ever done. Because, you know, there are some decent people in the, in the council, as there always are in every organisation. But um, like most government, in fact, these days, probably all government, basically, um, they don't s serve the people at all. It's the tail wagging the dog. Um, you know, uh, councils and governments don't serve the people. The people serve the governments and the councils. And... Uh, you know, it's the same everywhere, all over the world now. There's been this great seed change in the dynamics of the relationship between authority and the population. Do you know what? I can't disagree with anything you've just said. And, but but there, there, there are a number of people... I, I was going to start the interview by saying that you are a fascinating character. You're a nice man, and I've met you a couple of times now, and you've been nothing short of gentlemanly. And, you know, whenever we have a conversation, it's very helpful. Um, I like the fact that you're a family man. And, uh, and as I say, when, when, when I last spoke to you, you were watching Gareth sing live, who works for us, and, uh, I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a credit to you. He really is. Recently, I saw you um, welcome him out of the water after his charity swim, and somebody captured an amazing photograph because that photograph said so much. And people will... Uh, look at David Icke sometimes and, and, and get they might get the right opinion they might get the wrong opinion I, I, I just I just see a guy who speaks his mind um, I'll be honest with you there's an awful lot of stuff that I believe is true there's one or two things that I look at and I think I'm not quite sure about that and I would imagine that's the majority well, there's of enough, people there's enough of it isn't there I mean my last book was 355,000 words so uh, you, people take what they, they feel right with and, and leave the rest and, and I'm easy whatever they do it's their how, right how do you deal with negativity because there, there, there are, I mean, I put a message on Facebook this morning and I was uh, surprised to see that there were questions that were doubting, there were questions, and that's not the general consensus of opi opinion that, that I've had over the last couple of years. Uh, the majority of people say, yeah, David Icke, 80% of what he says, I believe in, the other 20% a little bit sketchy, a little bit, a little bit odd maybe, uh, but, you know, t this well, morning, there's a lot of, there's a lot of antisocial, uh, you know, questions that I might put you away, and I want, I want you to answer them purely and simply because I'm sick of hearing about them, and, well, and I'd much rather you have the, 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 ch the chance to explain. The thing is, Nick, uh, Ian, that um, how do I uh, deal with negativity? I don't. I couldn't give a damn. I couldn't care less what people think about me. It's, it's absolutely irrelevant to me. And, you know, we have this idea that when we say something about someone, that we're saying something about someone. But we're not. Every time we open our mouths, we are saying something, making a statement about ourselves. And thus, those that... Um, 
ridicule or condemn me having not even read a book and and when you question them they haven't even got a clue what i'm saying um th then they are for me making a statement about themselves not me uh, the fact that they can as most people do construct their opinions of events and people not based on information not based on research but based on i don't know <laughs> what what they base opinion. their opinions on? It's it's their I, I would imagine it's their own opinion. I, I want to come back well, to. Th but that's the point, though, Ian. And 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 this is how people can be uh, mass manipulated in terms of what they believe, because you know the few can't control the many physically. They can do that in a small area with with you know soldiers on on, on the streets. But you cannot control a population of millions or in global terms billions physically you have to control the population by getting them to think and perceive themselves and the world and and events in the way that suits you it's a mind game and if we don't break the uh the, the cycle by doing our own research and and asking questions rather than getting them off the peg from the mainstream media and the tabloid newspapers then we're just babes in arms, not expressing our opinions, but just becoming a repeater of someone else's opinion. And, and in this way, those that manipulate that mass opinion control the perception and therefore the behavior of the population. And when you look at the world, um, it is a full of repeaters. I mean, look at journalists. What are they doing? They're taking the official version of events and they're repeating it um, to the population. The population read it in the newspapers and repeat it to each other. You go to school and you have repeater teachers telling the, the, the pupils uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the way that the system wants them to see the world. And all the teacher is doing is repeating what's in the curriculum. When you've got a situation like um, with my son Jamie, who was taking a course which included uh, a section in the, in the exam on global warming. It's now called climate change as the temperatures fall, you, you'll note. Um, he made uh, the obvious point that any brain cell on active duty would, would see if they looked at the evidence, that the whole idea of climate change, human caused climate change, is a scientific insanity. Even some of the advocates are now coming out and saying this. And um, when he said this to the teacher, um, that, that, that was his opinion, the teacher said, well, actually, I have, I have some sympathy with the fact that global warming is, is, is a nonsense. But if you say that in your exam, you ain't going to pass, right? So, so we have a, a repeater education system. We have doctors that repeat what they uh, ha heard at medical school and repeat what the drug rep said when they came around to flog some more drugs. Um, wherever you look... You're looking at repeaters. And what I've been trying to do for 21 years is put other information into the uh, public arena and say, actually, there's not one way the sun, I was going to say the news of the world, but thankfully I, I don't have to say that anymore. But um, it, it's, um, it, it's trying to break this cycle of um, authority gives you a version of life, you believe it, and it becomes official history. I mean, you know, at one time, because it was the norm, uh, people repeated the fact that the earth was flat and ridiculed anyone who said it was a sphere. And, and the same is going on now, daily, 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 across the great swathe of subjects. I mean, North Africa. Someone said to me, isn't it great? Isn't it great that Libya's free, now Gaddafi's gone? Well, if they knew the real story, then they'd realize that um, Libya has been hijacked by a force that is behind NATO that is actually in the process, and you can read it in my books some time ago, of picking off country after country after country by stimulating um, and engineering protests with agent provocateurs, then condemning the, the, the uh, si I I sitting regime for, <clears throat> you know, violence against protesters and then sending the boys in. They've done that in Libya. They're going to do that in Syria. They'll do it in Jordan. They'll do it in Lebanon. They'll, they're, 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 they're going for uh, Pakistan now, constantly uh, bombing Pakistan with um, unmanned planes, which are actually being guided from a joystick in, near Las Vegas. 
Uh, it's just like a computer game to them, killing people, thousands of Pakistanis, and they want to go for Iran. <coughs> but when you see the way that what is happening in North Africa and the Middle East portrayed in the media, uh, then people believe it, and they're looking at things happening in the world, and they've got a certain view of it, which is simply a view that is repeating what they've been told to believe. And we have to break that cycle uh, of... of um, information so that we can actually see what's really going on as opposed and this is the key what we're told is going on what we're told to believe what we're told to perceive what we're told to have the opinion about and this is going on all the time you know how, you how see these, these journalists outside Westminster on the news yeah. right they go on to that bit of green and they come out and you'll notice this um, Ian because I was in journalism for a long long time and in the 1970s, there were still substantial interviews, and there were still interviews of some substance, of some length, with the people that um, needed to be questioned, the so-called representatives of the people. But what happens now on the TV news? The newsreader, who I tell you from experience of being in it, hasn't got a clue what's going on in the world, interviewing a reporter... Um, outside Westminster or somewhere else in Libya maybe and he hasn't got a clue because all he can tell uh, the newsreader is what the authorities have told him and they call it journalism it's just repeating and, and th if this cycle is not broken how the heck are we going to know what's going on in the world as opposed to what we're told to believe is going on so when it, when it comes down to it there are <clears throat> there are people that know uh, what's going on really but, you know, like yourself, I mean, you're one of those people that is is constantly uh, telling people this is what's really going on. Why aren't there more of you? Well, <clears throat> um, what's really going on is so vast and involves researching so many subjects, which on the face of it, when you start, have no connection to each other. But when you get deep in the rabbit hole, are fundamentally connected. And I have spent the last 21 years full time traveling to 55 countries now um, to uncover this and your journalists or what pass for them I don't know how they get it through the Trades Descriptions Act personally but um, what they do is they come into work and they cover a story one day and then the next day they'll cover another story and they'll cover another story Bill get to Libya you, you, you're in Libya for a few weeks he goes to Libya they've never been to Libya uh, and, and all they can do in effect is get so-called information from the authorities which they then stand in front of the camera and repeat and I uh, um, was in a studio once in South Africa and someone came in and, and, and read the news it was all live and when she'd finished the news and she'd read it very confidently this is what's going on in the world I said how do you know that how do you know what you've just read is true not a clue I mean so it, it's um it's a situation where the media um, has been structured to become um, the propaganda arm of the those that control what we call authority. Is there, is there any country in the world that has doesn't have that in place? Has has something that, you know better, more honest in place, or not, is it all the same? Not, just not about that everywhere? I've come across. Um, you see, um, it, it, it's. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting point and, and an important one, just to explain how the few control the many. What they've done is create um, a global uh, version, uh, and this is secret societies and certain families, of a transnational corporation. If you look at a transnational corporation like McDonald's, they have a headquarters somewhere in the world, in America I take it, and in every country they have subsidiaries of that headquarters. And the sub subsidiary's uh, job is to operate in, and introduce into that <coughs> country what is dictated centrally by the headquarters. Therefore, if you go into a McDonald's in Moscow or Sydney or Johannesburg or anywhere, you pretty much go in the same McDonald's because it's, it's, the, it's this corporate um, uh, web global web. Well, what this uh, network of families that I've been exposing all these years has done is create a secret society and family bloodline version of that. So you have the, the center of that web, and it's funny enough, not in America, it's in Europe. Places like the city of London, uh, Paris, Berlin, uh, Belgium, and uh, where NATO and the U European Union is. And in each country, 
there is a network of secret societies and families whose job it is to introduce the centrally dictated agenda in their country. And through this system, I say I've been to 55 countries researching this, whatever country you go into, you see the same blueprint. And, and because of this uh, structure I'm talking about, that's why everything is, is uh, kind of structured the same. And there's another um, step on from that. The, the network um, subsidiary in the country, they have subsidiaries in the towns and the cities and the, com and the communities like the, on the Isle of Wight. And through that um, kind of uh, pyramid structure or spider's web structure, those at the center um, can dictate and manipulate right down through into a country and right down through into a local community like the Isle of Wight. And therefore, um, you see the same blueprint everywhere. So when you ask me... Um, about the media, the media is basically structured the same every, everywhere. Of course, there are um, honourable exceptions. There are decent journalists trying to be journalists within a, a corrupt and rigged system. But of course, <clears throat> they pick those off. You see, one. This is an interesting point of of of. of I noticed um, over the last <clears throat> excuse me over the last ten years or so. I don't know whether you have that. There has been a real change in the personalities that are in the dark suit professions of councils and authorities and uniform professions like the police and what have you. And I, um, I, I could see the change had taken place where in, instead of any lip service to, service to serving the people, like what they call the old school policeman, and, you know, the, the guy who's got the ability, or the, the lady's got the ability to think for themselves in a situation, um, they've, they're being picked off, just like the decent journalists are being picked off, and being replaced with this new breed, which are basically uh, sociopathic narcissists and um, uh, with psychopathic tendencies. And I thought, I can, I've seen this personality change in authority and, and uniforms, but how have they done it? And uh, what they've done is they now have something called psychometric testing whereby uh, people are asked a list of questions and through answers to those questions they can uh, uh, assess and I, I tell you I know people who've done it and it's incredibly accurate they can assess their personality type and what they're doing is putting this new new breed of personality attitude to the public in the positions of authority they're doing it in america in canada in britain throughout europe and so now you have um this uh far more brutal uh police uh, uh behavior and you also have these uh, police people and other people in uniforms and dark suit professions who simply cannot think for themselves they have to consult the rule book. You, you can see them walking down the street, Ian, because they have a slot in the top of their head and the rule book is pushed in and, and, and that's it. I'll give you a quick story, right? Um, I could give you so many, but um, the other day, uh, this uh, film crew came to, to do a, a, a documentary about me and I was talking about the Isle of Wight trains. I used to love the steam trains and so I oh, will get you on a train. So we, get, we got, get on a train at the top of the pier and they're going to film me, not even talk to me, just film me sitting in a seat. No one else in the carriage, by the way, until we get to the bottom of the pier. What's that, two minutes? Yeah, less than that. On strides, uh, rule book in the slot. Uh, guard, have you got permission? Have you got permission to film? What do you mean? What do you mean permission to film for two minutes on, on a train? There's no one around. Uh, 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 it, you, you must not, you can't do that. And he's now on the phone. To the bosses. Um, uh, uh, oh, there's people filming. What's the film? Uh, uh, and he comes, you can't film. No, my boss said you can't film. And I, I said, what? Did you not have the ability to think for yourself? He said, well, it pays my mortgage. So you, pay, you don't pay your mortgage only with, with your money then. You pay your mortgage with your right to think for yourself. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, and a, a friend of mine the other day, there were people in Trafalgar Square. And they went to do a, a, a mass meditation. It's about 150, 200 of them. And they're sitting on the, fl on the floor or, or on the uh, uh, steps and they're sitting there with their eyes closed. 
The Heritage Police, because we have them now in London, they come over and say, you can't do that. And my friend pointed out that there were people sitting on the same steps who were reading newspapers quietly, and they were um, uh, having a cup of coffee quietly. So what is the difference between what they're doing quietly and what these people are doing quietly? And the only thing he could say was, it's different. He couldn't explain why, but it's different. And it was, it was fascinating to me because that's how these rule book in the, in the slot people um, react because they are always seriously uncomfortable when something is happening which is not normal. They, 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 can't, they can't deal with it. So if it's, not, if it's not the norm and it's not the usual, in their minds it must therefore be against the law or there must be a rule against it. Uh, and, and this is the kind of... Would it have been different if you'd have been Johnny Depp? <laughs> or not? How do you mean? Well, you on the train. Oh, David. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Johnny, yeah. Johnny Depp yeah. going to the island. Oh, film star, you know. Yeah. Uh, and but, again, you know, the guards got on the train... People don't film on the train, um, and so I see what you're so so something's different. So there, there must be something wrong yeah. here, um, and I'm, I, there must there must therefore be a refusal of allowing it. And it, 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 this is not a mentality which has f uh, increasingly filled the dark suit and uniform professions by accident. It's been done systematically because what they're doing when there's a few. And at the core of this global manipulation, compared with the 7 billion people, it is a few. You have to recruit from your target population to police the target population. And so that's what they do. They divide and rule, and they, they put people in positions of power, well, apparent power. You know, because, you know, I, I, I've had a few interesting conversations with these uh, officious uniforms in, in many countries, not just here. Um, and... You know, I point out to them, they have no power. They have no power. I say to them, take your uniform off. Where's your power? Get another job. Where's your power? They don't have any power. The power's in the uniform because the uniform's an extension of the state. And all they're doing is animating it. And if they weren't doing it, someone else would be. Because the power's in the wardrobe, not in them. But people who, who, who feel the need to have power over, they're attracted to uh, uniform professions because it, it fulfills that need. And it, it gives them the illusion that they have some kind of power. I mean, there was that... Uh, uh, example of the, the there's a thing called the TSA in America that run all the security at the airports, right? And if you want to um, if you want to meet officious um, um, I have power people, then you know go there. And there was this one guy. He went off his shift at Los Angeles Airport, stops in the middle of the departure lounge, starts pounding his his chest like uh, you know uh, a gorilla and screamed, I have the power. I mean, that, that's the mentality you're looking at. Fortunately, it got on the, on the news, and he was, he was sacked. But um, there are many, many like him all over um, the TSA at, at airports across America, which is why people have found uh, traveling more and more um, unpleasant, because not just the nature of the security has increased, the personalities of those um, involved in the security that you have to deal with has, has, has dramatically changed. Where do you get all your information from? That was another question that somebody sent in. You know, obviously you get all this information. And I was just, just coming off the back of what you said about uh, the media, they're obviously getting their information from somewhere and feeding somewhere. <coughs> where, where do you actually get yours? Well, um, the, uh, the story started for me uh, 21 years ago, and um, I have come across... Uh, documents, uh, books, personal experience, uh, people on the inside. And what you do is you take all this information, you look at the common themes, and um, you uh, then play it out and, uh, uh, further with further investigation to see if what you're being told is actually happening. And you create this tapestry of um, interconnected information that uh, makes allows you to see the world in a totally different way and the reason that so many people now uh, um, are coming to my books and I'm just going to speak in five cities in Australia uh, over the next uh, uh, um, what seven eight weeks and every single uh, theater all the tickets have gone and I'm still in the Isle of Wight this is 13,000 miles away people who only get their 
information from the mainstream media would think that I've disappeared if, if they realize what was going on and the uh, support and, and interest in, in what I'm doing worldwide they would be um, uh, uh, shocked and you know when I'm traveling um, I'm meeting people all the time because once you you have a uh, a reputation for for this for putting out suppressed information, people come to you. They you know because you're the vehicle for them to get out what they know into the public arena, and so it's it's a great range of different ways the information comes. Plus the fact that when I um, started out 21 years ago, it was a very lonely road. There weren't many. Um, walking with you but as a result of um i guess 9 11 started the change and then when me weapons of mass destruction weren't found because they were never there in in 2003 even though uh, uh, an invasion was justified that killed and maimed more than a million iraqis uh, people started getting more and more uneasy and my goodness me are they uneasy with the world now and they started to look at this information. And what that spawned is a, a, a massive number of people around the world who are investigating the same stuff. So the sources of information now, are, are it's not about uh, even finding it anymore. It's, it's having the time to, to process it. And, you know, when you, you've got a situation which, which for, for me, uh, some days is surreal, where what was in my books in the mid-90s is now being read on the television news because it's happening, then that has brought also um, an enormous number of people to, to, to my work. Because, you know, when I was um, walking that lonely road and being ridiculed, um, couldn't go into pubs, even in my home, in my home uh, uh, town in Ryde, um, without being uh, laughed at and all the rest of it, um, that something drove me on. And because we have to say what we believe to be tr true, otherwise we are engaged in, in something called self-censorship, whereby instead of speaking your truth, you let the perceptions and views of others who haven't done the research to dictate what you say and don't say. And if you do that, then when what you've uncovered is going to happen happens you say i knew that people go oh, yeah you're just saying that but because i put it out there took the ridicule took the crap from some brain donors by the way um uh, on this island too because they do exist funny enough yeah, don't point at me. Um, um, <laughs> and uh and put it out there mm. Now I'm reaping the benefit because what I put out there is happening. And, and that's what you have to do. The, the, the tide has cha changed. It's, oh, absolutely. It's turned. It's turned. Like you, you, when you go back to that time that you, talk, you were talking about, um, you know, I remember watching Wogan. I remember hearing people, what they yeah. were saying. But it's different. It's, it's, it's different. You've still got your knockers. You've still got your people oh, you out noticed. there that... Yeah. It's the shirt, mate. <laughs> You've still got your knockers, but you, you've, you know, there, there is a, the, the tide is changing. There's a lot of people that you meet and they say, David, like, yeah, 80%. I like what he says, 80%. Not too sure about the rest, but uh, well, the th that, the maybe th that will come. The thing is, Ian, as you know, um, the only way you're not going to have, well, not even this way, but the only way you're going to dramatically reduce people having a go at you for something is to stare at the wall. And do nothing. And then someone will say it's terrible that he's staring at the wall, doing, uh, not doing anything. So really, um, we need to speak our truth. We need to express our uniqueness, whatever it is, without um, uh, having our uh, uniqueness and what we wish to say dictated by the fear of what other people think because that's the prison that most people live in uh, it's not um well i'd like to say this or i really believe this uh, it's like well how do i say this in a way that's acceptable to these people so they won't think i'm crazy i couldn't care less some people who who who, who uh, think i'm crazy I, I i you know i'm going oh thank goodness for that because if they think you're 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 not crazy you, you must be in real trouble i mean some of the some of the uh, uh you know um the people who haven't got two brain cells to rub together who just ridicule it i mean why should i worry about that why should i be concerned because uh, wh wh why would i 
I, I say what um, I believe. I write what I believe. I back it up with very, very detailed um, evidence. And people make of it what they will. I couldn't care less than what they make of it. It's, the, it's their right to make of it whatever they choose. There's a lot of stuff that's happened. And, and you know, you've obviously been proved right. What about the ones that, you, that maybe you got wrong? Is, it, is, is there anything you've got wrong in the past? You think, mm, yeah, I wish I'd not said that or I'd well, wish that that didn't come true. Th- there was... Um, there was a period when all the ridicule was going on and this is a lot this is a very long story where things were happening to me um where i didn't know what planet i was on you know when you see me on the wogan show um in what 1991 um i didn't i didn't know what planet i was on because things things were happening it was like it was like um you know when you live in a bubble and suddenly the bubble bursts uh and most people live in a bubble of uh, perception and then suddenly something comes along, bursts the bubble, and you realize that your perception was the size of a pea compared with actually what, what is happening and all the rest of it um, and what there is to know. And there was a period of about three months in there in that, in that, uh, around the Wogan show where I, I didn't know what was going on. And then after about three months, it was like, I, t- I tell you, I've described it like this. You know when you press too many keys on a computer, yeah. it freezes. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's being given so much information, oh, it cannot process it. Well, that's what happened to me um, around the time of the Wogan show. When the bubble burst, symbolically, I, uh, my mind was filled with an explosion of information, concepts, uh, perceptions. And processing it, it was like, sorry, too much, can't do it. But after about three months, um, suddenly it was like the computer unfroze. And I was the guy I was before. And people were saying to me, I thought you'd gone mad. You're the same David Icke I used to know. Well, I seemed to be, but I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Because the way I saw the world had completely changed. And, and, and since uh, that time, 1991, the th- of course, you, you're going to get little de- detail and stuff wrong here and there. But um, the themes uh, since then uh, uh, have shown themselves to be accurate by the fact that they've happened, you know. And um, I, like as I, I said earlier, you know, uh, I'm, I'm watching what's happening in North Africa and the Middle East, not from a daily update on the TV news, but from what I learned years ago was this agenda. Because when you are going to do something, you're going to hijack a country, um, you're going to take over a great swathes of land and resources, Libya just happens to have the biggest known oil reserves in Africa. We talk, talk, we're going to have to take a break. Okay, okay if that's but okay. just very quickly, when, 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 uh, when you uh, know that you want to do that, you have to find an excuse to do it. Because you can't just say, hey, we want to go into Libya for the oil and, and, and all that stuff. Because mm. people say, what are you doing? So you have to find an excuse. Yeah. You can't just say, well, we're going to take over Syria. We've decided, we've had a meeting. No, you can't do that, because people will say, what are you doing? So you have to find an excuse. And so I, I'm seeing the excuses um, where people who haven't done the research are seeing credible explanations for what's happening. Although more and more people aren't, by the way. A lot, a lot of people are waking up and seeing that what they're told is a load of nonsense. Predominantly, I think when we do a phone in and we talk about Libya, Libya, and we talk about Iraq, I think they're all with you on that. I think the majority of people. Are yeah, there's a lot. Of, I, mean, it, I mean, it's a totally different world now, from my my perspective, because so many more people are are awake to this, and you're not talking to a closed door anymore. No, I, I, I mean, there's so much I want to ask you, but we've got to take a break and we we'll come right, back. Mate. And I want to talk about Ted Heath. I want to talk about Iran. I want to talk about yeah. America and China and money. Oh, well, um, I, I, I'll talk. Uh, yeah, I'll talk yeah. to you about America and China in another way as well. Okay, and which is also, related to the Middle East I mean, and chemtrails too. Somebody okay, mentioned chemtrails. No problem. Okay, good stuff. Uh, we'll come back in a moment. Something should have happened there. Here we go. Rearrange the following words. Change never leopard spots. The mid-morning show with Ian Mack is sponsored by isleofwhite.com. The last-minute offers are just a click away. The Isabel Centre. It's not just a place to get food at reasonable prices. Also available, education, literacy, PC skills, working alongside adult and family learning. Rooms for rental, for meetings or use as a training room. There are quiz nights, race nights and youth club nights. Health club offering help with stopping smoking, weight or general health issues. 
Foods, a chiropodist and even a prescription service. It's the Isabel Centre in Newport, adjacent to Downside Middle School, opposite the Pan Stores. Call them on 248170, that's 248170, or check out www.theisabelcentre.com. Remember the days of gobstoppers, sherbet lemons and crackling space dust? Gummy Chews, your favourite corner sweet shop, online and simple to buy at the click of a mouse. Original versions of long-forgotten confectionery. 350 lines of Technicolor confections. Choose one of our Swish gift boxes for all occasions, full of delicious treats to put huge smiles on everyone's face. With speedy delivery and top-notch customer service, Gummy Chews. Revive the nostalgia, dream back to long summers, jumpers for goalposts, and when you couldn't even spell responsibility. www.gummychews.co.uk The Princess Royal now serving breakfast Monday to Friday, 8am until 11am. Under £5, including tea or coffee. And the new edition, The Pensioner's Pint. Tuesday to Friday, 12 till 2, at only £2.50 a pint, including all drafts and ciders. And on Sundays, Christine's Roast Susser from 12 till 3. For all your jobs, for all your needs, whitequote.co.uk Whitequote.co.uk is the island's leading quote comparison website. Whatever job you want, whatever trade you need, from builders to entertainers, you name it, we've got it. Don't waste time phoning around. Get the right quote on whitequote.co.uk. For all your jobs, for all your needs, whitequote.co.uk. The Naturally White Skincare range of natural products are hand-prepared by Sharon Lake, a qualified aromatherapist, using carefully sourced high-quality essential oils, local natural spring water and other high-quality organic and natural ingredients. Naturally White, the island's affordable high-quality natural skincare range, was this year the winner of a Natural Beauty Award, raising the profile of these products alongside other well-known organic brands. Naturally White luxury skincare that doesn't cost the earth. You can contact me to discuss your skincare requirements by calling 07 917 135 294 or visit my website www.naturallywhite.co.uk It's 20 to 12, this is uh, Vectus Radio. Uh, David Icke is here and I just want to ask you David because we were j- just sort of touched on it during the commercial break. Because you ruffle a lot of feathers and you do, I mean I've ruffled a couple but not as nowhere near as many as you. Uh, you mentioned it during the commercial but you've never had a death threat. Are you, are you a concerned man? No. When it comes down to couldn't it. care less. No. You know, we, 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 the, you know, it, what's the worst thing that can happen? Someone kills me. Oh, I'm terrified. You know, the, the body's just a vehicle for consciousness, the real self, awareness, pure awareness, to experience this reality. Uh, it's what I call a genetic spacesuit. It's a, it just allows us to interact with a range of frequencies, which is all this world is, a range of frequencies called visible light and the electromagnetic spectrum. So the worst that can happen is I leave the body and carry on my eternity, like everywhere, everyone else, um, in, in another um, uh, reality. I mean, I'm terrified. Look, my legs are knocking. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and, you know, I made a decision 21 years ago that I was going to go for this, and, um, uh, and I am, and um, I'll keel over eventually still doing it. Because um, you, you can't understand what's happening in the world. And the horror for our children, grandchildren, not even that, uh, th- those more so in terms of t- uh, years, but we're in a time scale now where it's actually happening and affects everybody. And, and if people think the Big Brother state is terrible now, well, they've seen nothing yet. You know, what is planned would make George Orwell wince, uh, and as I've been uh, explaining for a, a long time. And when you know that, Ian, um, that you can't just walk away and say, I've had enough. I'd like to, uh, many times, uh, because, you know, it, it's very challenging uh, uh, doing what I do. But you can't, because... You can't just sit there and see what you know is happening unfold in front of your eyes while you've got your feet up. You've got to, you've got to do what you can, and, that, and that's what I am doing. And thankfully, it's starting to have a very, very significant effect worldwide. I mean, you know, there are apparently 250 million websites on the web. Um, DavidIke.com is in the top 5,000 in America and the top 6,500 in the world. And that's, uh, what, well under two decades 
after I couldn't walk in a pub without being, uh, you know, ridiculed sure. or walk down the street. So are there you know, rival David Ikes? Are there not other people like you around at? Uh, well, well, I, as I said earlier, Ian, you know, and, and and you know, round of applause. You know, it was a lonely road, but now there's people all over the world who are doing uh, or are investigating uh, elements of it. But you know, this is such a big tapestry. The the rabbit hole goes so deep. And uh, it goes into areas which people who read The Sun would think were bizarre, but actually aren't. They're actually very logical. Um, and, and thus, the, 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 this, this, I, I connect dots across a, a mass of different uh, subjects, everything from the nature of reality to banking scams, engineered wars, the whole shebang. And, and um, therefore, um, there's not uh, many doing that. But, but oh, th thank goodness there are staggering numbers of people who are investigating and communicating uh, uh, parts of the story uh, often large parts of the story and and my goodness uh, thank goodness for that because we need that and we want more people to do it i want to ask you about ted heath because ted heath is there prominent on your website yeah uh you say he was a murderer well no i say he was a and i and i, I wrote this in a book called the biggest secret in 1998 um, that he is a he was a, he was and he was alive for a long time after the book came out. A child killer. Yeah, he was a, a, a serial child killer. He was a serial ch serial child abuser, and he was a, a a high practicing satanist. And nobody has nobody has knocked on your door and said. Well, right. some 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 strange lady um, who, who seems to have uh, you know a lot of a lot of uh, uh, problems. Um, uh, who who is, I think whether she still does. He used to write for the county press, um, uh, did a knocking article on the book, uh, The Biggest Secret, when it came out. She came to my home. I didn't know sh she was who she was, deeply unpleasant. Um, and um, I treated her with respect and, um, and talked to her about the book. She then writes this knocking article in the county press. But in the course of that, she rang Ted Heath, this nice old man, I think she said in her article, um, and uh, asked him, or read, read the passage from the book where I'm, I'm saying that he's a, a multiple child-killing Satanist. And over the years, I've had endless confirmations of that. I used to do a lot of it on the Isle of Wight, by the way, because there's a heck of a lot of that goes on on the Isle of Wight. So much so that a few years ago, uh, the News of the World... God rest his soul, uh, <laughs> did a two-page spread, as we Remember talked about last, earlier, yeah, yeah. Um, about the, uh, uh, the, the scale of Satanism on the Isle of Wight. Because this Isle of Wight mafia that uh, manipulate through the things like the Freemasons, that manipulate through the council, um, that run drugs, that launder drug money through properties and, and many other scams, uh, a, a lot of them are also into Satanism. And, um, and uh, you know... You know, you, you you look at the island, lovely lovely place, beautiful landscape, but but give them time, and um, behind that facade, unbelievable things go on, and 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 a lot of Satanists come to the Isle of Wight, and and Ted Heath certainly did that under the cover of of, of yachting, um, and uh, it's amazing how when you get to the upper echelons, uh, well actually. In, in, in theory, the upper echelons, actually the cesspit levels of a human society, you know, the positions of power and all the rest of it, the number of Satanists, paedophiles and, and paedophiles that you find is staggering. And um, this is why, um, you remember the, um, the case in Belgium which broke when those children were found murdered and, uh, and it was called the Dutro case. He was procuring uh, children for, for, for famous uh, politicians and people in power in Belgium and Belgium is a real center for for pedophilia and uh, child abuse and and Satanism for a simple reason that's where NATO is and that's where the European uh, Commission is and and so um, a small country like Belgium has a, a, a massive ratio to population of people I'm, like this that I'm talking about and so they have an insatiable demand for, for children this guy up in um, Dunblane uh, Thomas Hamilton um, the reason the uh, cover-up inquiry um, 
uh, ordered that papers relating to that case were going to be locked away for like a hundred years, a ridiculous amount of time, is because he was procuring children. He was a paedophile himself, Thomas Hamilton. He was procuring children for, for famous uh, politicians uh, that, are, that, are, that are on the news all the time uh, uh, at that time, and some of them still are. Um, the, 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 as I say to people, the world is not just a little bit not like we think it is. The world is nothing like we think it is. And um, in the little, t well, we've got 10 minutes left. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, um, because it's so important, is where the North Africa Middle East thing is going. I've been writing for at least since the mid 1990s that the plan is for a third world war. And that's where we're heading. The third world war, as I wrote back in the mid 90s, is designed to be triggered out of the Middle East. Um, and this is where this is all leading. In fact, the Third World War has already begun. It's just not been officially declared. It began on September the 11th, 2001, when a engineered uh, uh, terrorist attack orchestrated by Mossad, CIA, and, that sort of, and, and military intelligence in uh, America was used as the excuse to start picking off country after country, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya. They're now bombing uh, um, Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia. Um, at, at, like I say, with joysticks in, in, in an air base near, near Las Vegas where what they call in America soccer mums, go up and pick the kids from school and then go back or go back and have lunch at that and then come back and get all of the, uh, the joystick and start killing more people thousands of miles away through these uh, unmanned drone uh, un uh, bombers. Um, and so the Third World War has happened. It's just not um, been officially declared. And as I said in the mid-1990s, the plan is to bring um, the NATO countries, uh, Europe and um, America, Canada, into a war against Russia and China. And I said, watch for the emergence of China, which was just, China was quite, you know, low key at the time. Look at it now. It owns America, basically, the debt. And um, when, you, when you follow it, as I do daily, um, already the Chinese and Russian militaries are getting closer and closer and joint, doing joint exercises. And it's got to the point already where China has said, mess with Pakistan, which has a border with China, and you mess with us. And you're going to see this move, move, move on, because uh, that's what they want to do. Because the, the structure they want globally is a world government dictating to all countries, a world central bank dictating to all countries' economies. This is why they crashed the economy in 2008, and they're going to crash it big time again um, in the next cycle, because it's a, um, a technique that I call problem-reaction-solution. You create the problem, you get the unquestioning media I was talking about earlier mm. to tell the people the version of the problem that you want them to believe, i.e. bin Laden orchestrated 9-11 etc. Um, and then uh, you, you get the people at stage two to react. Do something. This can't go on. What are you going to do about it? And then at stage three, you who've covertly created the problem and blame someone else, offer the solutions to the problems you've created. And I said in a book called And the Truth Shall Set You Free in 1994, I wrote that, to watch for NATO um, to start operating out side its official sphere of influence which or, or operation which was the north atlantic north atlantic treaty organization yeah. it's now in afghanistan uh, and, and it's um uh, of, of course bombed uh, constantly through the summer uh, libya and and now they're talking about it, it take uh, taking on uh, syria and w one of the other things it's world government it's world central bank uh, and having crashed the economy they're now saying what I said they'd say in 1994 or 5, we need a, a world central bank to sort out the problem, problem, reaction, solution. And they also want a world army to impose the will of the world government on any country that doesn't want to accept what it dictates. And that's what NATO is. The reason that America, France and, and uh, Britain started bombing Libya um, and then immediately handed it over to NATO was to s and set the precedent again of NATO becoming the world army. When you keep constantly hearing politicians like uh, uh, Cameron and, and Obama talking about the world community, 
right, or the international community, that's just code for world government. I mean, the, the, the UN Security Council, to a very large extent, is, 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 is the, uh, the security arm of a world government. And uh, the uh, way that um, nations are being, uh, or the sense of nation, is being eroded all around the world. So basically, I see articles all the time. What is it to be British anymore? It's just like a, that whole culture's gone. Um, is because they want to bring an end to countries and they want the world government at the top of the structure. Then they want the European Union, the A American Union, the African Union, which they already have, a Middle East Union and uh, a Pacific Union, which is the Far East and um, uh, Australia and New Zealand, under there. And then under that structure of Orwellian uh, control, they want to break countries up into regions to de-unify in a unified response to that edifice of power above. And that's why uh, maps uh, out of the European Union have appeared in the newspapers over the last few years in which um, Europe is broken up into regions, in which Britain is broken up into regions, and not that uh, you know, the regions of Britain are together. They're getting some regions uh, of Britain, like in the south, and they're, they're connecting them to regions in, in, in France and, and Scandinavia and under a, a, another group grouping uh, uh, authority. And this, uh, people say, that's crazy. Well, it is um, if you think that these people are there to serve you. But it's not crazy if you realize that what they want to do is to break Europe and, and, and the world up into countries, up into regions, um, uh, because that's what they're doing there's the map to show you they want to do the same in america as well and break that up um how uh, how, how, how much of a time scale are we talking about here are we talking about in the next five ten oh, years or if we do not um get off our backsides disconnect the ass from the sofa um and and pull back the concentration on x factor and game shows and start to look around and have some peripheral vision and then start to do something about it collectively then within 10 years we will live in a global society that will be very very close to Orwell's 1984 and um, you know in, all, in 1984 Orwell said that uh, in, in his novel, and I explain in my books that it wasn't actually a novel, I know where he got his information from that this was coming, um, he said that there was this perpetual war going on in his 1984 society, and the perpetual war was to keep people divided and ruled. Now, we have that perpetual war. It's called the war on terrorism. When do you know a war on terrorism has ended? You don't. When you invade a country, someone wins eventually. How, how, do you, how do you say the war on terror is over? You don't. It's the perpetual war, and that's why they chose that. And, um, you know, people um, are increasingly feeling uneasy about the world, but they can't put their finger on what, what it is. Do you know what? That, that is something that I've been thinking for the last 18 months. Maybe I woke up, dis disconnected my bum from the sofa, and that's, that, that's something that I've, I'm asking myself all the time now. Well, well I'll, tell, I'll tell you something that's interesting. Uh, well, um, I came across a um, mass mind control manual for these people, written by these people to tra for train other people, which explained, it was called Quiet Weapons for a Silent War. And it, it, um, it was about mass social engineering and and perception manipulation um one of the one of the, one of the things it says in that manual by the way is about the population keep them busy 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 back on the farm with the runner animals in other words um get them so focused on surviving or or, or if they have money on you know diverting their attention into into things that that that, that take their attention away um, and another thing it said was people, um, what they call silent weapons are situations, manipulating situations to get a reaction and a response that you want. Mm. And it said, you know, people instinctively, um, and this, this was found back in the 1980s, people instinctively feel when the silent weapons are applied to them that something's not right in the world. But because it said 
because of the nature of the silent weapon, they cannot put their finger on what it is. And what I've been uh, uh, trying to do for the last 21 years is do the research, which, you know, most people can't do because they, 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 they're trying to earn a living. Um, a, mo a lot of people don't do because they can't be bothered. But anyway, uh, I've, to connect the dots and to say, look, this is why you're feeling uneasy about the world because this is what's going on and this is how the dots connect and when you do it's like a jigsaw puzzle you've got pieces all over the table and it doesn't seem to be anything then you put a few pieces together and you start to get a bit of a feel for it uh, where it's leading after 21 years there's a lot of pieces in place and when you see the, uh, the from that perspective you are looking at a picture that extraordinarily uh, accurately explains why the world is it is and what's happening in the world now but don't ask you Edwards what is going on in the world because he probably doesn't know what's going on in his own studio um, and uh, people like him there's a guy called Ben Brown who's been re reporting it says here reporting and we've got a dictionary of what reporting you know <laughs> definition from Libya uh, clueless about what's going on but of course he stands there and if you do it confidently oh he knows what he's talking about no he doesn't he's he just confidently telling you what mm. someone's told him um, we're, um, and we're so, running out of time, so don't don't look to those people to tell you what's going on find out yourself okay we're, we're running out of time but I just want to say that there's there's obviously a lot of people out there that ignore everything yeah. and just get on with their lives right. uh, because maybe that truth that you've painted that that story that you've painted whether it's truth whether it's a story is just too i don't know they just don't want to they don't want to face up to it no they don't scary. they don't they don't want to face it uh, and and let me let me give you a, a final thought um you um are told that a tornado's coming right you don't want to face that so uh, in the in 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 the sand and you stick your head in it right because you don't want to face the fact that a tornado's coming but your head may be in the sand and you can't see the tornado coming but your bum is still in the air and the tornado's still coming mm. now if you get your head out of the flipping sand turn around and face it you can take avoiding action because if you don't face it eventually your backside's going to be spinning 50 feet in the air and and you you're gonna not be able to take avoiding action that's basically the decision we have to make are we gonna face this in an adult way with a bit of bloody backbone um, or are we gonna ignore it hoping it go away I tell you it ain't going away we have to deal with it now most, pe most people will uh, ignore it because they're too busy watching X Factor, they're too busy watching Jedward on Big Brother, I mean... Well, in that case, mate, they're better prepared for their backside spinning 50 feet in the air, symbolically, because um, it's going to. I remember you saying we were down at Ryder Regatta and you said this, uh, not just this nation, but the world, the people of this world have got to wake up. Yeah, uh, well, compared with 21 years ago, mate, enormous numbers of people have and are all over the world, but it's still... Uh, nothing, nothing like the majority, because the majority either couldn't care less, um, don't want to look at it, um, uh, or uh, are just preoccupied with the diversions put before us to make us focus in one direction so the manipulators can do what they like behind their backs. And, you know, uh, humanity in so many ways, a sleep humanity, um, are like, are like a, a moth flying around uh, a light on the porch. They're so mesmerized by the light, game shows, football, all this stuff, they can't see the guy creeping up behind them with a swatter to smack them on the bum. It's a great way to end. Um, thanks very much for coming Pleasure, in. pleasure, Ian. We've only scratched the surface. Anytime, we? yeah. Well, didn't, we didn't get to talk about the riots. We didn't get to talk about the I'll tell you the uh, riots. Let me tell you about the riots. Problem, reaction, solution. If you want to increase police powers, um, you can't just do it. And Well, we've had a discussion. We're going to increase police powers. So people, people go, what do you mean? What do you mean to increase people? What's this is about, all this about? So you have the riots. This is why, you know, as, as so many people, e e onlookers and, and, and others said, that the police just but he stood there for the first uh, uh, two or three nights and just let them do it. Um, let them loot. 
because they want a major problem. And, and, and sources inside the police have said, look, mate, we were just told to stand there and observe and not get involved. Um, uh, uh, and so they create the problem. And, and, and what happens? In comes Cameron and, and this ludicrous uh, Lady May, the Home Secretary, and say, because of the riots, ABC have got to be going with curfews and more powers and all the rest of it. And you know the irony? I'll tell you the irony um, of, of the riots. It's that um, David Cameron stood up in, on his high bloody horse and said, uh, uh, condemned the rioters, condemned what went on, and he said, the trouble is people have no respect for life and property. And you know, when he'd finished that, he went away and got the latest report on the pepper bombing of Tripoli, uh, killing thousands of civilians, and they're doing it in, they'll do it in 30 now, and pro probably still are. So you, uh, uh, Tony Blair condemned people. He came out over these riots. Oh, it's, it's social problems, and it's no respect. This is the guy who lied to, to send the boys into Iraq that killed and maimed more than a million Iraqi civilians. These people are beyond hypocritical. And uh, we, need to, we need to sort them out, because if, if we don't, they'll sort us out. David, thank you for coming in. Thanks, it's been, a pleasure. It's been, it's been fantastic.